Hi, I'm Nikolai, aka 56 Miner, and today we'll be unboxing our August Premium Box. This mixed media box has a lot to it. We'll talk about value, combining different mediums, and I'll share some tips and tricks that I picked up when working with the supplies. Let's get into it. Our first item is going to be a brand new product from Kurotake, and it's going to be the High Viscosity Fluid Graphite. This is a super interesting medium that allows you to use graphite more like a watercolor. Right out of the package, it has a loose putty consistency, but dilutes well with water. Before we can demonstrate that, let's grab some other materials from our box. For our brush this month, we have the Chisel Blender from Princeton. This velvet touch brush is great for thick or thin lines and works really well with a variety of mediums. For our surface this month, we have a custom Britannia pad from Hanamole. This textureless hot press pad is great for transitions and creating subtle gradients. Because it's a heavy weight in stock, we don't have to worry too much about warping, and the paper can take a large amount of water, which is great for mixed media work. Taking a dry brush and a little bit of that fluid graphite, we can create a textured effect on that surface of the pad. So if you want something with a little bit more grit, you can definitely create that. And because we're using a blender brush, we can smooth out that pigment and create value transitions. By adding a little bit more water, we can get those smooth values, which reminds us so much of a watercolor. Just like with traditional graphite, this medium is going to be very value dependent. Value being how light or dark an area is. By washing out my brush with water, I can create a value that's only slightly darker than our paper. And by using just the fluid graphite, I can create our darkest value, which is going to be closer to a black. This month, try creating a value scale. A value scale can be any number of values as long as each are distinct enough to be separated. Here you can see I'm creating a 7 step value scale including the white of the paper. This is a great way to familiarize yourself with the medium and allows you to kind of work on those observational skills. Once you have a solid understanding of value, it's a lot easier to render form. So here I'm going to paint a candlestick using our medium. I'm going to start with the lightest wash that almost barely darker than a paper, that way I can get my shapes established, and then I'll go in and add darker areas with darker value. It's important to note that I'm letting each layer dry before going back in. This will allow you to get kind of the crispest edges as you work with these different values. And as you mix those values, I would suggest going a little bit lighter than you expected because you're building on an already darkened area. Value is one of those art fundamentals that can take some time to learn, but it really makes a huge difference in the final product. Our next three items come from Emote, and they're going to be a set of fine liners in emerald green, light green, and sea fog. These unique tipped fine liners have a 0.4 millimeter line, are water resistant, non-bleed, and have fade proof ink. Fine liners are great for lines without any line weight. They're also great for outlines or adding details to a piece. Hatching or cross-hatching are great techniques for fine liners, and you can make impact marks to give a little bit of movement to a piece. The sea fog in this set works great with the fluid graphite. You can go in and do a foundational sketch or use it on top for details. For warm-up this month, I wanted to go over the concept of line contour drawing. This is when you draw the lines and the shape of a figure without taking your eyes off of it. It can be a little bit tricky, but it's great to increase hand-eye coordination and can really help you kind of get comfortable in thinking in shape and line. By no means will your drawing come out perfect, and that's not really what this is about. It's about increasing your hand-eye coordination, and that takes some time to build up. Take your time when you do this exercise. Here this footage has been sped up, so take all the time you need. The main focus of this is keeping your eye contact on your subject, and you can do anything. It can be a kettle, a bookcase, whatever you want. The important part is that you give the exercise a shot. Our next item is going to be a Copic Multiliner in black. This fine liner is great if you want to fill an area with flat black color, and it is about twice the width of our Emote fine liners. Another great technique for fine liners is called stippling. This is when you pack an area with small dots, and the closer the dots are together, the darker the value looks. Our next item is a tube of Holbein acrylic wash in deep green. 
Unlike typical gouache, this does not reactivate with water, which means once it's dry, it's permanent. Straight out of the tube, the gouache will offer super opaque layers, but you have to be careful to not go too thick as gouache can crack. Diluting it with water, we get a very vibrant, transparent green. Let's use that diluted gouache to do a small illustration of some leaves. I'll start by sketching out the overall shape with our brush and then fill in those areas with the transparent gouache. With the overall shape established, I can take a less diluted bit of gouache and add some lines and details. Going over with more transparent layers to kind of help build that illusion of form and shape. And because the gouache is permanent once dry, we don't have to worry about reactivating any of those lines that we've already placed down. Because the Kurataki graphite paste is water soluble, we can add a little bit of that to the gouache to help our shadow areas become a little bit darker. This can help to add a little bit more of that illusion of depth to a piece and give you a little bit of a texture element. Used on its own, the graphite paste and gouache kind of creates a desaturated gray green. Let's grab the last item in our box, the Koenor chalk pencil in white, to add some highlights. This pencil will work best on areas with gouache, as the gouache dries to kind of a matte, textured finish. It can also be used to kind of blend out those values of the Kurataki graphite paste. Now that we have a good understanding of our materials, let's make a more finished piece. I'm going to take inspiration from the myth of the sword and the stone, and depict what I think that would look like. I'll start by sketching out a rough outline of my idea using a very light wash of the graphite paste. With the paper still wet, I can dab in a little bit of that acrylic wash and get a fun blooming effect on the grass. Next, I'll start to work on the shadows of the stone, making sure to allow each layer to dry if I'm trying to create a crisp edge. Because the graphite paste will reactivate if you go over it, you can always soften edges by using that blender brush and a bit of water. By mixing different levels of the gouache and the Kurataki paste together, we can start to get a large value of different greens and grays, which I'll use for the grass. Taking our fine liners, we can get some nice crisp edges and add some texture elements. And this is a great example of how that sea fog liner kind of blends in with the graphite color. I'll use our Copic kind of sparingly since it's such a dark color and to outline certain portions of the sword. As a final step, I'll go in and darken a few areas just to make sure my contrast is there and then take that white chalk pencil to lighten up some areas and add a little bit of a texture effect to that grass. And with that, our piece is complete. Hope you enjoyed the video, learned a few things, and if you post your work online, make sure you use hashtag SketchboxAugust. We love seeing what y'all create each month, and I'll see you next month.